Well, that's enough of that crap. Welcome to Naked Zombie Paranormal Radio with your host, Fraz Scott M. Wadsey. It is the 15th of June and you are on Naked Zombie Paranormal Radio. I'm your host, Brad Scott. And tonight I am joined by someone who lives way, way across the other side of the planet from Australia here. He comes from the USA in Massachusetts and his name is Mr. David Franklin Farkas. Thank you for joining us tonight, David. How are you? My pleasure, Brad. Here it's first thing in the morning, so... Uh... Yes, and it's rather late at night here. <laughs> See, the, 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 links, the links I go to for my listeners, mate, staying up all hours just to get you great exactly. guests on. <laughs> I, I hope they appreciate you. <laughs> well, I do, um, I do get occasional hate mail, but we'll talk about that for another show. <laughs> um, now, mate, I'll just give people a bit of a rundown on what you do so, so they're aware of the fact. Now, folks, I've known David for quite some time, and we've spoken religiously on, on Facebook for quite quite a while now david runs a business called house healing uh, and is basically set up for the real estate industry where people who have trouble selling their homes through paranormal events i guess is the best way of putting it actually contact david and they get him to cleanse it from a distance but this is a thing you can do it from anywhere in the world can't you david well, yeah, what I do is remote healing, and not just for real estate. So okay. So a lot of it is land and buildings, but I also work on people, businesses, um, negotiations and court cases, travel problems. It's all the same clearing of things that are distorted or from the past or, you know, whatever the distortion is, and you get rid of the stuff that shouldn't be there and things improve. So some of what I do is homes that won't sell mm -hmm. or, or commercial buildings that won't sell. Um, some of it is places that have paranormal activity going on, either because which they've either confirmed with an investigation or not. Yep. Um, and you know, the, one of the things about investigations from my perspective is Unless you have somebody that knows how to do the clearings, the best you can do is tell people they're not crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, which is like, which is fair enough. I mean, what, what can you do right, at times? Right, and and that's important because you know they they may be having all these experiences mm. and going, this can't possibly be, and you can confirm it, and that's wonderful. Well, see, um, this is this is a thing, mate. I've actually personally used your services myself, haven't I? You have. I have, and and this is a thing. Um, like I have a house over New Zealand, same problem, had trouble selling. It's back on the market now. Time will tell, of course. But, and, but what I was really impressed about, David, is when I got all the information back, um, you had everything itemized exactly what the process you did was, if you know what I mean. It wasn't just giving me a phone call back saying, hey, Brad, yeah, I've done it. You had everything right. itemized. You went into vortexes. You went in how many spirits were there, how many moved on. In fact, there was even a demonic present in the house. How, how did how do you come to that? Um, when when you go and travel, I guess through remotely to, to find this information out on a, on, on a premises. Well, it's, I actually just came back from uh, the American Society of Dowsers convention, mm -hmm. and um, one of the I started talking there years ago. And one of the things that's wonderful for me is I get to spend time with these master dowsers, people who are not psychic, but using a biofeedback me mechanism, whether it's a pendulum or something else, yep. um, can get all kinds of information, do all kinds of work. And they said, they looked at what I did and they said, oh, that's paper dowsing. That's map dowsing. I was doing, I had invented things I thought, well. um, but they had procedures that I hadn't never heard of before. So over the last few years, I've developed a way on a piece of paper to download a whole lot of information about a house or a person in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it, you know, it's always funny to do spiritual work with forms, but I have a form. Yep. And it's got a list of 
what's basically just letters at this point that represent the questions. And I get numbers, you know, into my head come numbers for the specific things. And since I, I know other people that can check my work, who, you know, can do the same thing, yep. I found that it's very accurate. So I get the numbers, and the numbers by themselves are inconsequential other than giving me a feel for what's going on because I see the patterns in the numbers, mm -hmm. um, especially with people, you know, which uh, energy centers are open, which uh, what kinds of beings are attached to them. And I know a lot about their personal history from where they are now. Um, but the big thing is that after I do my work, I can go back to those numbers and see how they've changed. And they should all zero out. Um, you know, all the entities should be gone. All the things that I found should be should be crossed out and zeroed out. And it also means that if someone calls me back and says there's a problem, I go back to that sheet and I can do the same scan again and see how the numbers change and say, oh, look at this. You know, one ghost showed up. They must have either been hiding or... Um, you know, got in because everybody else left and there was room mm -hmm. or something, you know, whatever the circumstances were, but I can see what the issue is. And um, people like numbers, so I put the numbers in the report, but then you get people who are very uh, linear and they go, well, this number should was higher the last time you did something. And it's like, you know, the report really should say what you were laughing at, which is I found some stuff, I cleared it, it's okay now. Um, but people like the numbers. Oh, look, pe so, people do like numbers. I've got to agree with you on that. Because yeah. the way you've actually structured it, look, that's what impressed me the most, is that the simple fact is I had everything in front of me there, if you know what I mean, Wh which right. really impressed me. Now, I have seen and I have dealt with uh, mediums and psychics in the past myself before uh, through through different, because I've been involved for paranormal a long time, you're always going to cross paths with people. And... I have, sorry to say, but I have seen people out there that, that do walk around with their arms outstretched, going, um, waving a bit of a smudge stick, if you know what I mean, oh, the house is clear. But what I find is then, within a certain period of time, it comes back with a vengeance, if you know what I mean, if it's not done properly. And I think this is where I think people should look at having people who actually know what they're doing when they do this. Right. And right. that's, that's well, always been a concern for me is that because these things, you know yourself, if they're not done properly, they'll just play the game. They'll just lie and wait, won't they? Well, there are two big factors. One is if, if the perspective is you're looking for ghosts and only ghosts and what you're trying to do is get them out of the house, yeah, you can get them out of the house. That doesn't mean they won't come back. Mm. And, and it doesn't mean that somebody else won't come back. So it's just chasing them off. Um, the other factor is that there's a lot more to look at than whether or not there's a ghost in the house. So the land itself has energy meridians that are typically called ley lines. Yep. And where they cross, vortexes form. And they can be polarized positive or negative. And, you know, that's just a polarity, but positive things like every church I've ever seen is on a positive vortex. Um, every uh, native or aboriginal sacred site is on a positive vortex, you know, all those power spots. And on the other hand, all the places that are about contraction and fear, like uh, prisons, police stations, military bases, all those kinds of things are always, uh, psych hospitals, you know, um, are always on negative vortexes. So, so there's so there's a pattern to it. So there's that level. Yep. There's also the history of the place. So there could have been a tribal battle a thousand years ago that went on that's anchoring the energy of all that conflict into that place. The house that got built on it is res was built there because of a resonance to that. And then it will attract to it people that have a resonance to the house. So you have this layering process of the original energy of, you know, very long ago past events affecting the present. Or it could be something simple, like, you know, there was a, a conflict. I, I had a house, a house like this, 
the house was great. The market was hot. Everybody said this house would sell in three weeks. And they found me about three months after the house went on the market. And what we found out was that it was the home, it was built as the home for the contractor who built the development. Mm -hmm. So all of his subcontractors donated their work. And then he couldn't afford the house, and he sold it. And there was, all the contractors came back to be paid, and there was this big legal battle that went on. Well, when they tried to sell the house, they couldn't get a contract signed. Everybody liked the house. Nobody would buy it. And yeah. it was all the conflict of the court case and the dissension among the, all those parties that was still anchored in that house. I cleared it, and I think they got a they got a higher bid than what they were asking within a few days can you, once the energy was cleared. Can you, can you basically take us through, a, like, the sort of the process? I know, look, there's a few trade secrets involved in this because everyone's got their own way of doing it. Can you, you take us through a bit of a, a process on how this actually works with you, if you know what I mean? So you've said you write everything down, you get the numbers up and stuff like that. Do you actually go into, like, when you do it through remote, remotely, do you, do you get pictures? Do you get imagery at all or anything like, you know how you hear some psychics, they talk about, well, I get this information this way. How do you get right. your information besides the numbers? It's a combination of things, and it varies depending on what's going on, because some things clear very easily, and I don't have to go into a deeper state and get more information, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the beauty of having the information sheet, downloading the, all the information initially. Um, while, I'm, while I'm getting the numbers, I'm also getting impressions, so I might get a number and I'll get father or, you know native or something else um, but I always ask for pictures let's say it's a house yep. a picture of the house front and back yep. and then I go on Google Earth so I can get a satellite photograph and that lets me plot out the ley lines mm -hmm. and look down and see what, what's around it because sometimes if I zoom back I'll realize that there's something several miles away that's having a profound effect on on that particular location. Um, I can put my hand on the picture or on the map and, and get a lot of information as if I was there. Really? So wow. So, that, so that's my version of walking in the house and putting my hands on <laughs> Yeah, doing my um, hands out stretch, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm not, um, please, please don't get around, I'm not, I don't, I'm not knocking psychics at all, um, but well, my, my point was that each, each individual person has their own method. If right. you know what I mean, and right. I've met a lot of psychics and mediums in my time, and they all have the same basis, but very different approaches. Right. It's a big and, personality you know, thing. And there's there are different approaches, and there's also different levels of experience. Mm -hmm. So, people who are talented can go to a few weekend or week long workshops and start getting results, and. You know, so they go out and they start working, and that's not a bad thing necessarily. It's just that they're beginners. Um, there are other people that have apprenticed for years with a shaman or, you know, whoever their teacher is and have been doing it for decades. And then you really start developing your, your own understanding and your own methods. And you know what the pitfalls are. And mm -hmm. when you run, run up against problems, you go, oh, I don't know anything about this. i got to find out how to do this. Um, and then you, got, then you start getting people that can do things that are more complicated. And one of, the, one of the fun things in my life is I know a lot of those master practitioners, and the, those are the people I'm interviewing on my show. Um, but so for me, I come to this originally as a hands-on healer uh, working on people. So I do read a lot of stuff with my hands. You know, it's a, a primary tool for me. Yep. Um, even when I do... When I'm working at a distance, I can still read better with my hands than anything else. Um, the other part of it is that the people I studied with were shamans. You know, they were... So, you know, there's kind of a difference between a shaman, uh, most healers, and a mystic. And someone said, you know, a mystic goes into 
a state of sacred unity and comes back telling stories about how incredible it mm -hmm. was and all he wants to do is go back and continue the experience. A shaman goes wherever he, they have to go to get the job done and then they come back and make lunch for the kids. Okay. You know, Can you it's, just... It's, just... It's, much more, it's much more nuts and bolts. What do I have to do here? How do I get it done? All right. So just can you explain to the listeners, because uh, not many people, especially in my neck of the wood, would know the difference. You know, we don't have um, shamans as, as such, if you know what I mean. Well you, well, you do. You know, you have people in the Aboriginal mm -hmm. traditions. Oh, the elders and stuff like that, yep. Right, who, who know things that other people don't know and are responsible for taking care of the tribe. Yep. So the word shaman is from a Mongolian Siberian dialect, and I think the literal translation is the one who sees in the dark, okay, or the one, or the one that can do things in the dark. So it's the acknowledgement that there are unseen things, and this person is there to take care of that aspect of life, to take care of the things that are unseen that are affecting daily life. And what I'm doing is applying. What's basically been done all over the world throughout history in every indigenous culture to the modern world. So it's my version of doing what the shaman, the medicine man, the elders um, still do in mm -hmm. all the tribes that have, that have been untouched. Um, except I'm a geek and I do it <laughs> in you know, the Western world. Um, you know, people, oh, look, mate, the glasses don't give things, it away as a geek at all. One of the things people get is that I'm really not airy fairy new age out there psychic guy I'm no well geeky no well you're not that i mean this is this is a thing i guess that's why we are, we, we become good mates so i think we're i mean if you look at both the standing together there really isn't a lot of difference between the two of us as far as and you wear glasses and i don't uh we've got the nice shiny no, you're head about, the you're about a foot taller than I am. <laughs> and you, don't you forget it um but <laughs> it's it, it's really great to see that now so, so we talk about. We so we can use my my house in New Zealand, the house as as a, as a test piece because it's my own place. It's no one else's. It doesn't matter if you know. So we can talk about that. It's not a problem. Right. Now, when you found or had uh, look, folks, just for so you understand this. Look, my house in New Zealand has been on the market now, coming up to nearly two years. If you know what I mean. And I got David in because we, you know, we'd been friends. We'd been talking online and stuff like that about different things and aspects. And I thought, bugger it, you know, I'll give I'll give David a go. Now the house then went off the market for a while, and then got David involved, and now it's back on the market. Um, so it'll be real interesting to see later on down the track how how well it goes. But you actually picked up a, I mean, I always thought the house was a bit iffy, if you know what I mean. There was a few times I'd be laying in bed at night and I just, funny, okay, funny story. The house was, when we first moved in there, it was great. You know, lovely, nice, cosy place. And within a matter of a month, I wouldn't sleep at night because that always feel like there was someone in the house, if you know what I mean. And Absolutely. It, it used to keep me awake constantly. Um, it's not because I'm sensitive or anything like that. It's mainly due to the simple fact because you just know what's there. And, right. you know, it used to freak the wife out no end when I'd, I'd jump up in bed because I'd see something walking down the hallway or something like that. But you actually picked up a really bad spirit there, didn't you? Uh, something of a demon nature. Can you tell us how you came across that? It's just one of the questions that I ask. Hmm. You know, there, there are different kinds of entities. Um, the ones that most of the paranormal focuses on are ghosts who are people whose bodies have died. Mm-hmm and they haven't made the dimensional shift to being in spirit. So they're still stuck in space-time. And, you know, I call it being software in a hardware universe. You need hardware in this dimension. Mm -hmm. And most of them, and, and this is, I read the literature in the, in the field, which is, you know, another one of my geeky things. And the number that comes up across the board is that 80 to 90% of ghosts don't know they're dead. Yep. And there's a whole, I've been collecting all the different ways that that can happen. But if you don't know you're dead, you're just trying to, and the other thing is that ghosts have their personality from that lifetime. Mm. And the range of personality on one end is gregarious or, you know, potentially violent even, you know, people that are interactive either for good reasons or bad. 
And on the other are people that are totally withdrawn and timid and never interacted when they were alive. Mm -hmm. So in across that range, you get people that don't have bodies now interacting with this confusing world that doesn't work the way they expected it to. I mean, that's, um, a, that's a funny thing with the, the house itself. The house was only about, well, I think it was about six years old. It, it was fairly new, but it was built on a park if you know what I mean. We had Ascot yeah. Park leading down the back of us um, yeah. in a cul-de-sac up on a hill. and But it was like Grand Central Station, if you know what I mean. Yeah. The, the amount of stuff that, yeah. you know, being a paranormal investigator myself, I knew what was going on in the house. But I, you know, I, I couldn't do anything about it. It's just one of those right. things. It was beyond me, which, you know, I know people find it hard to believe and all the rest, you know, <laughs> being talented and all. But, you know, I found that, and this is what people don't realise, is that there are times when you need to call in somebody else, if you know what I mean. You need right. to be able to get hold of that person say, hey, listen, this is out of my hands. I don't know what to do. Give it to somebody who knows what they do. And this is what people should understand. It's, but my biggest thing is, is finding the right person to do it. Right. What, what makes you different, and I'm talking bluntly now, mate, what makes you different from Joe Bloggs down the road who does the psychic event as well? For one thing, I've been doing it a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I apprenticed for three years with two shamans um, over, I think it's 35 years ago now. So I've been working with this, experimenting with this for a very long time, and part Part of the training, maybe the most important part of the training, is getting desensitized to weirdness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, most of the paranormal investigator shows in the States are reality shows, and it's about drama. Yes. And, and creating an experience. And, you know, an object moves or someone gets touched, and everybody freaks out. You know, an object moves around me, and I go, you know you're not supposed to be in my kitchen. You better have a really good reason. Now, what's going on? I'd you be know. saying, make me coffee. <laughs> Pour yeah, me a know, beer. What, 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 what's up? You need help? Because if you don't need help, you really got to get out of here now. Mm. Um, you know, it's just a, a very different perspective on it. It's much more matter of fact. It's not that things don't happen that aren't freaky, but um, I've had enough very bizarre stuff happen to be able to stand in the middle of that and ask, okay, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason that I work remotely was that I've had some dangerous things happen. And I was like, I don't have to be on site. Why would I want to do this on site? <laughs> don't have a big you know? sign on my chest saying, grab me. I can, well, you know, basically the sign says, I can see you. Yep. And this, this, you is, this is another thing. Just sorry to interrupt you here, David. But, you know, we hear about the white light a lot. If you know what I mean, like when people go and give themselves protection and stuff like they yeah. do an investigation, and you know this firsthand, wouldn't wouldn't the white light be more like a moth being drawn to a light in that sense where it's like, here I am, I need protection, and you're an easy target? Or does the white light actually protect you? What's, what's your view on that? The, the thing that makes you, you can see yourself as a target, but yeah. you know that basically makes you visible is your level of vibration. Yep. So people that are doing spiritual work or the new children that are coming coming in the last 30 years, the indigo and crystal children, have a very, very high vibration. So even for a ghost that's totally confused and living in kind of a cloudy dream, you know, involved in some part of their prior life, which is what I think residual hauntings are, um, you know, really not interacting with anything, sees this bright light, um, which feels really good, you know, and then it becomes like leaving an ice cream cone out on a picnic table. Okay. Ooh, this is good. Yep. You know, and, and they just kind of are immediately attracted and want to have some of it. So the more you do the work and the more you do spiritual work and the higher your vibration is, the more attractive and more visible you become on the other side. All right, so this, um, this is why they don't sort of like me is because I'm just a big grump and, and, <laughs> and, and, I, and I have no sort of um, spirituality about me whatsoever uh, in that sense where, you know, I, when I go and do an investigation somewhere, 
I, I um, don't do prayer or anything because my personality to me is strong enough to, why the hell would you want to follow me home? You know, I'm, I'm bad enough to live with now, let alone hanging around here, if you know what I mean. So do you reckon a lot of it is to do with people's personalities? Like if they're sort of timid or, or if they're sort of unsure about themselves or they're going through depression or something like that, you think they're more of a target for this sort of thing? Well, let, let's stay with ghosts for a second because yep. people who are depressed are more of a target for negative entities. Mm-hmm. Um, the other factor is that ghosts are looking for interaction and they will find the people that can see them or hear them or know they're there. Mm-hmm. So the obvious ones are little children, um, psychics yep. of, of whatever sort, anyone that can has sensitivity, and so-called crazy people. Because I've worked in locked psych units, and I could see who they were talking to. And the ones that ha- just have voices that they have a conversation with all day are talking to ghosts. Really? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Psych, hosp- psych hospitals are just ongoing conversations between the ghosts and the living. So, the so that- is that because they run on a different, like the brains run a different level altogether, like an alpha, like, you know, I see like some cats, I'm not comparing people with mental disability to cats at all, but you see how cats will just stare at nothing and then they get all jumpy and take <laughs> off. And it, it, it's, if you know what I mean, David, is, is it, is that well, the, I'm cats, trying to put not, this down into layman's terms. So, so people right. who listen can understand it. Cats can, cats are psychic. So yeah. they can see the, they can see the changes in energy. You know, one of the telltale signs that there's um, an entity in the house is that the cat is looking at it, playing with it, whatever it is. Cats will usually play with them. And the dog is barking at it and backing away in fear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what? Who are you? And why are you here? (laughs) Um, And afterwards, and afterwards, you know, I call it cat scans and lab tests. Um, You know, afterwards. (laughs) afterwards, Yeah, lab tests like that. After the animal, after the clearing, the animals calm down. Yep. So it's you know it's one of the ways of telling that the the clearing has been affected. But you know the the ghosts are look who are looking for interaction because not many of them are mm-hmm. um, are looking for someone that's going to pick up on who on what's happening and have a way of communicating. So they may get drawn in by your high level of vibration, but even if you're not that high level. A level of vibration if you have that psychic opening if you have that uh, sensitivity they'll pick up on it now the other thing that you were mentioning about people that are very negative there are other kinds of entities you know you saw my whole long list yep uh, and one of them i call demons because it's the most common term but i look at them as energy parasites mm-hmm. so they feed on human negativity. And when there's somebody who typically has had a traumatic event in childhood or recently, but typically in childhood, and they have damage to their aura, so in effect their spiritual immune system has been damaged, Mm -hmm. and then they go through some other crisis and now they're depressed, despondent, whatever it is, um, these entities will have an easy way to get in through their aura and attach to them and first of all suck energy from them because they're feeding on that negativity but what they want to do is make more of that negativity and more chaos so people who are truly psychotic and have a voice telling them to do bad things uh, have these energy parasites attached to them and they're it'll always be someone who will feed back exactly their story because they're feeding on their story so they've got someone outside telling them they're terrible in the particular way that they personally think that they're terrible yep. while they're telling themselves that they're terrible. And they sit down with the psychiatrist who can't see the entity. And now you've got a situation where the patient knows there's somebody there. Mm-hmm. The psychiatrist says, no, there isn't anybody there. To the patient, the psychiatrist's crazy. To the psychiatrist, the patient's crazy but the psychiatrist has all the power. So, you know, you can give somebody meds and it will take the experience away, but it will also uh, dim out all the other aspects of their personality that have any juice. Okay. 
Well, that's that's, that's that's a that's that's a very interesting very interesting concept. That listen, mate, we're gonna take a quick ad break. Um, so, guys, we'll come back shortly after these quick few messages. Are you looking for a professional writer who deals with bid management and document production services? Then you need to contact Chris Childers. Chris Childers is a professional tender writer with over ten years' experience working in such industries as diverse as civil construction, recruitment, insurance development aid, ITNT, and the public sector. TenderWrite offers a specialist client-focused service, producing professional and high-quality professional bids, tenders, and proposals for a wide range of clients. So contact TenderWrite today on 07 3482 2792 or email chris.childers at au. Master of the villages, you're revolting through the gate. Why is that, Igor? It's because your website is just so crappy, Master. They just don't like it. Oh, Igor, what do we do? Oh, that's easy, Master. We contact Key Designs Media Studio. They do web, print, video, and new media, Master. Quick, Igor, what is that number? 07-3122-4612. Or email info at keydesigns.com.au. That's key design to the Z. And we are back. Like tonight, I have Mr. David Franklin Farkas, and we're in the process of discussing different aspects of what he actually does. Now, David, you're saying before before we went for the quick ad break is that just the demon side of things, and this is what you pick up on. Can you just relate that bit more for us, please? Well, there are many, many intelligent entities that will never have bodies. Mm -hmm. They're never going to be human. So people are familiar with ghosts, but there are a lot of other things out there. Um, One level of that is what's called the elemental kingdom. All the stuff that you see in fairy tales about fairies and elves and leprechauns and all that. Turns out it's real. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are people that are sensitive to that realm and talk to those beings. Um, I run into some of them because in my clearings I need to help them out because they're stuck. Um, but it's not really my, my corner of the uh, invisible. But the demons have a tremendous religious uh, connotation to them and a lot of fear attached to them. And I look at them a lot like organized crime, which is and gangs, which are the physical world out, out picturing of what the demonic world is. And it's a hierarchy. So Mm -hmm. at the top, you know, the top there is a boss who's um, got all these underlings doing stuff for them. But the ones that you find in houses typically are not um, those high-level demons um, who, you know, the Middle East, for example, has one that's huge. Um, But you find, you know, minions, henchmen that are just looking for something that they can, that's already negative, that they can make worse. Um, because they want to basically steal energy, um, if they can, enslave people, you know, get, get people's lives to be screwed up. And so they need a starting place, they need something negative, and in your house, I don't remember what, was, what I found anymore, but I, you said I found one. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an indication to me that at some point in history, either a historic event on the land, or someone that was a tenant in the building, or something like that, um, had an issue which attracted to it some of these neg- negative entities. Who, well, you know, I do know that I, I do know the people who had the house before us. They they were a divorced couple, um, and it was quite messy. It turns out um, talking to the neighbours, <laughs> right. there was a lot of yelling and carrying on. So unless that yeah, was a main contributing that'll factor, it. that'll do it. And if you add to that some addiction. Mm-hmm. which, again, is a form of slavery and a way that people give up their power, and it also damages the aura. So if they were doing drugs or drinking heavily or something else as part of all that, it's an opening for these guys to come in and go, hey, let's see what we can do here. He did a party on, dude. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. They're, they're the guys you don't want at your party who 
get everyone arrested and then leave, you know. Well, that, that takes me out of it, doesn't it? <laughs> Seriously, dude, the stories of my youth, I will not ever, ever <laughs> say it on radio. <laughs> well, and, oh. you know, and you, if you think of your friends mm. who went through those same things and didn't come out of it intact, that either wound up in jail, wound yep. up in a psych hospital, um, well, just the it just girl, end up being the, no good at the end of the day, right? You know, the, the the girls that got in trouble, all of that kind of stuff. Yep. That was because they depleted their aura sufficiently. There was enough damage, and they were far enough out of their body that somebody, whether it was ghost or a demon, had a field day. Yep. Was, hey, let's anybody who who knows. I don't know if you have the same expression there, but here we have an expression: when he drinks, he's like another person. Yeah, very, very much like that, yes. Okay. That's, yep. that's you take on a different usually, personality. Right. And that's usually a ghost who wants to drink. If you know people that are that are blackout drunks, yeah. where they get drunk and they're wild and crazy when they're drunk, but they don't remember a thing about it yep. when they wake up, that's a full possession. Beca- somebody, because of some, the alcohol? Somebody, yeah, somebody hangs out with them that wants to drink and party, you know, a ghost, mm-hmm. typically. And when they get drunk enough that they're out of their body far enough, the other personality comes in, and they're the ones that are having a great time. They just have a body to, uh, on loan for a while. And then the person wakes up, they have a really bad hangover because their body's been taken over and messed with, and they don't remember anything. And I, I've met... Blackout drunks as young as 17. Yep. So it's, it's really common. But when I start asking the story of what their childhood was like, typically they were sexually abused or mm-hmm. they were beaten or something else that did, that, that kept them out of their body because people learn it doesn't hurt as much if you float out of your body when you're being abused. And then that becomes a habit. Yep. And also it shatters their aura. So anytime they're under stress, they leave their body and there's all this, all these holes in their aura and they get attacked. So when I work on people, that's part of what I work on is um, fixing the energy centers, repairing the aura, that kind of thing, so that they won't be vulnerable. Mm. Kind of stuff. Does, does, does this take a lot of your energy away from you, if you know what I mean? Because you, yeah. if, if you're sort of concentrating on a person or premises or something like that, and this is just my, my understanding of it, is when you're going into that sort of depth to repair somebody, doesn't that leave you open for, for attack as well? It, it varies. Yep. There's, there are some things that I can do very quickly and without a whole lot of expenditure of my energy or even necessarily having to go very deep into an altered state to do it. There are others where I get drawn into a very deep altered state. I might even, you know, be unconscious of what's going on around me for a while. Um, and a lot of energy comes through me. It's not so much that I'm getting beaten up by what's going on, but it takes a lot of energy and it, it, get, it gets channeled through me. Um, and some of those projects, I'm basically toast for the next two days. You know, it's, it's not so much that... I get beat up as I get exhausted mm-hmm. and unfocused. Um, and then it takes, takes you a while to sort of... Which makes it difficult to do this as a business. How come you didn't return my call? Because I was... Toast. In a coma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, that explains the last 10 years of my life. Um, but th- that's... <laughs> and it's unpredictable. Some things that look like they shouldn't be a big deal mm-hmm. um, take a whole lot of energy and focus. And others that I would think are going to take a, a massive amount of energy and focus just clear easily. So it's totally unpredictable. Um, every once in a while, there's a dangerous situation. It's one of the reasons I work remotely because it won't affect me as much. Yep. And, and I do use a lot of protection. But every once in a while, there's something where there's a very powerful, mean entity that wants to do damage. And, so when you're actually getting in this sort of, and you've come across something that is really downright nasty, and now my my perception of this is that it doesn't matter where you are, if you have that link to it, couldn't it follow you back? 
if you know what yeah. I mean, couldn't use that as like people have heard of Astro Travel or, right. or or all the right. rest of that, and you've got that cord thing happening. Do, right. do, do you find that? Do you find that? Oh, hang on, they know I'm, what I'm about to do. Um. Well, first, first of all, it cracks me up, but if you do this work enough, mm. you have what we call here street cred. You know, oh you yeah, have, yep. You have a, you have a reputation. Yeah, I've got nothing like so, that. <laughs> and, and a ghost told me that. And said, oh, that'll save me a lot of time. And um, you know, oh, everybody knows what you did last night. Really, yeah. you know. Um, so I use that to my advantage. So I get one of these big, ugly, mean things trying to freak me out. And I just, eh, have you asked anybody who I am? Which they never hear. And, <laughs> you know, so typically you they look back. <laughs> right. So typically they look back like a deer, deer in the headlights and go, oh, I am so screwed. And I go, yep. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, so, I can just I can just imagine that actually. It's uh, so no, that's, that's... Exact, no, and, and and when they do that, all all of the archangels I work with are, are now visible around mm. me. And they're like, oh, this was a really. Bad so that's that's another question I meant to ask you about, and I'm glad you brought that up actually, David. It's the the, the angels, the angels. So like, what people have this huge belief and faith in angels, okay? And yep. and and I get asked a lot. And, and this is funny, you know, because I do get asked these questions as uh, one of my angel guides, and I can't really tell people that, but people are placing, and I've noticed nowadays, especially within this field, are placing a lot of emphasis on their angels or on their guides. Are the angels and guides actually doing what they meant to do, or is there like a double standard? It's like, oh, well, you got yourself into this, we're standing back on this one, or do they just come to your defense if you know what i mean if you're sort of like well, inviting it in to yourself because you know yourself right. i've met people that have gone through basically being cleansed and stuff like that and they come back to normal but then they're missing that that extra attachment as well and a lot of them go back to their old ways or a lot of them go back to because they come reliant on it if you know what i mean they come reliant on that that entity or that thing that's attached to them. And once it's gone, it's like they're missing a part of them. Is well, this where the angels come in and, and help heal that as well, or what's the go with that? The archangels that I work with, you know, my joke is that they're a SWAT team. Yep. One that one of their roles is to take care of this stuff, and for whatever reason, I'm the guy on the ground. You know, <laughs> I'm the guy. I'm the guy with the body for them. Um, so in my work with that specific group of archangels, um, we have a job to do. We do the job when we don't have a job to do. Yep. They're sort of in the background giving me a hard time and laughing at me, but you know, they're off doing what they, they need to do. Yep. Um, so we, we have a real, an ongoing relationship for... One of the things about the relationship is that you have to ask that angels can't cross over and violate your free will. They won't interact unless something really bizarre is happening. And, you know, they push you out of the way of a train or something. Yep. Um, but typically they will not violate your free will. And since we have free will, we can be as dumb as we want. Oh, and yeah. They can't there, brother. <laughs> because we have to learn from it. Yep. You know, we're here to learn lessons. So... People can have codependent relationships with living people, and they can have codependent relationships with angels. Mm -hmm. You know, where their ex their expectations of the relationship um, are not that they're going to hold their own and take care of themselves, and this is this other person or the angel is a part of their life and helps them. They're expecting things of the other person or or the angel that are totally inappropriate and blaming them if something goes wrong. So I think in a lot of the conversation about God, Satan, angels, and all the rest of it, you know, people are basically scapegoating. Okay. Why did, you know, why did God do this? Why did Satan do this? Why, why did God allow this? Why didn't my angel? Well, you know, you're the one in space-time with a physical body, and you've got free will. It's your mm -hmm. choices that are creating your response to what's put in front of you. And that stuff, you know, that's the part of it that gets really tricky. So it can't, being, so sorry to interrupt, mate, but can can anybody 
call upon their angels. I'm just this is for the yeah. listeners. It can yeah. can anybody if they feel like they're exactly that can they call on their angels to help them out in times of need? Like if they need to find yeah. a job or they're feeling down or there's any sort of um, you know if they've been haunted or whatever, can anybody do it? Absolutely, absolutely, and that's that's the first step in all the 12 step programs and part of the reason those programs work is saying, I can't do this by myself. I am going to ask spirit to help me. Mm -hmm. And it's a, that's the piece of it. That's so powerful on that, but anybody can do that in any moment. And people who develop some kind of psychic sensitivity and a methodology can either hear a response or, um, you know, something will happen in the physical. You know, there's lots of stories of people asking a question and then um, a truck goes by and on the back door of the truck is a picture or a word that's an exact response to their question. Mm -hmm. um, or they look in the newspaper or any number of other things. The communication can happen lots of different ways if you're looking for it. And if over time you develop an understanding of how your responses come. So not everybody hears things, not everybody is going to have something dramatic, but everybody will get something um, if, you, if you continue to look for it and say, okay, show me how to do this, show me, you know, where's the sign, what's going on. Of course, you can ask for a sign vehemently, and I did that once, and I got a sign painting job the next day because <laughs> the universe is a punster, and will always show you <laughs> where you passed the rock. Which, which way to go. <laughs> yeah, my mind's always at a crossroads somewhere. Multiple <laughs> places to turn. I always seem to take the wrong bloody turn. Um, yeah. But You the, know, the difference between people like me and people who think they're not like me, yeah. most, you know, some of it's talent, some of it is that I put in a lot of work to develop the talents. Of course. Um, had, good, had good teachers. That's like athletics or music. You know, there are people that are that are good that don't work at it and they never develop it. But everybody's got this going on. It's just they've been convinced that it's not. So they go, oh, well, you know, I, I'm not psychic and none of that stuff's real and everything else. Well, you create your own reality. So for you, that'll be true. So basically, um, in a nutshell, what you're saying is your own free will. It's your choice at the end of the day, exactly. isn't it? You can't exactly. really. But, you, you, yep. But there's a lot of help out there. There and is. You can make the free will choice to create that connection and start a communication. Mate, that sounds excellent. Listen, we've got about 14 minutes left to go tonight. And then the, the hour has just flown, as usual. Yeah, really. Um, but what I'd like to do is, is just not only do you have househealing.com, and that's people, if you want to go and check out Dave Franklin Farkas' website, if you go to www.househealing.com, Dot com, um, you'll be able to find his website and all the links. Is there anything quickly you want to add to that website there, mate, to tell people about? Because I know you've got some YouTube stuff on there as well, and you give us some talks on that. Well, I just started my own internet radio show. On <laughs> yes, Empower, that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> EmpowerRadio.com. That's it. With, with one R. Yep. Um, and it's called The Farkas Files. The truth is in here somewhere. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of what I'm doing, some of it is my talking about metaphysics and shamanic work and uh, the paranormal just as background information. So I do a little metaphysical moment at the yep. beginning of each show. But the interviews are people talking about... Mostly, some of them are master practitioners, and I love doing those because you get to find out how they got there. Yep. And that's a big part of what I do in all of the interviews with all the guests is say, all right, you're doing this cool stuff, but where'd you start? And what did you have to go through? For the very reason that we were talking about, people look at someone that's been doing these things for 30 years and is a master of this, the work, and says, well, you must have been born that way, right? Well, no, not necessarily. There are kids that are born that way now. Mm -hmm. but most people, there's a vague sense of the talent and the sensitivity, but you have to find your teacher 
And sometimes that's a messy process. You know, your life goes bad in some way and there's a struggle and out of that struggle comes finding someone who helps you with your problem and then you realize you want to study with them. You know, so, and every one of us has gone through something similar. Everyone has had struggles. Everyone has had challenges. Um, many people have had false starts where they found someone to work with and it wasn't the right person. Um, some people have worked in several traditions and then integrated things that look like they're not related but come up with you know, a whole new way of working because they studied with several people. Um, everyone's gone through some version of walkabout in the dark night of the soul. And um, what I want people to get is that we're all on this journey, on this path, and it's a commitment and it takes work and it takes you know, finding the right person to, um, to study with. And a lot of studying with someone is getting your behind kicked. Um, <laughs> yep. Oh, look, yeah. I, I totally agree with that. And, and, that's, and to be honest with you, with myself, um, that's the best way I learned. Uh, not, not that side of things, but within the paranormal field itself. I mean, mm -hmm. me personally, I mean, I don't know how many times I, I really messed up as a young bloke. But by messing up, I learned by it. It's not so much, you see, we have shows like um, Sensing Murder and stuff like that where we have really good psychics who, who can predict where, you know, how someone was killed and stuff like that. But when you go and take on that sort of, that sort of area, I mean, your, your whole credibility is just riding on, 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 on what ifs, if you know what I mean. Um, especially in that sort of that TV sort of genre, but getting off topic a bit. But you know, when I was a young guy, it was yeah. I mean, you messed up. You learned real quick what not to do next time. Did you exactly. find that the same thing as yourself? Well, I found I've been in several situations where it's like, oh, I've heard about this, but I thought they were joking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've people been so much trouble. Yeah. Um, and but my way of looking at it is okay thank you very much i didn't die <laughs> i need to find someone that will explain how to do this right and typically within a day or two because i was hanging out you know in a situation where lots of uh, psychics and healers and shamans were crossing my path someone would go oh yeah don't do it that way honey you'll just get hurt let me tell you how to do it right um you know, there's always someone around, but you don't know the question to ask and you don't have the desire to ask until you're opened up by being put in a situation that might, you know, is at least partially dangerous and gets your attention. The people who wind up doing this work at a high level are the people who, when that happens, say, I need to find out how to do this right, instead of running home, telling the, the creepy story and saying, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> Which is a perfectly okay thing to do, of but you know it. Um, it means that this isn't the work for you. <laughs> well, it isn't um, for everybody, most... is it? That's 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 the thing, David. Right. It it, it right. isn't for everybody. See, not 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 everyone is is going to have certain skills or abilities, and that's why I've always been right. said to self. I if if I get out of depth in what I'm doing, I will call upon someone who knows better than me. There's always going to be somebody. He's going to know more. Right. It's just a fact of life. It's just the way it is. So I like to see you know, when when like new groups start to form or someone who's just learning to, to use their psychic ability and stuff like that, that they look at people, I guess, like yourself, and say, what what am I doing wrong in a way? You know, how can I learn to do something better? Right. Well, one of the things about this convention I just went to um, is that over coffee and over lunch, wind up hanging up, hanging out with people, and someone will just make a side comment. Mm -hmm. and I'll go wait, 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 wait. How do you do that? <laughs> you know what, what, what was that piece? Because I've never heard that before. And at every single one of these conferences, somebody gives me a pu puzzle piece, something that I just never looked at in a particular way, never heard in a particular way, and that sets off a cascade of, well, if that's true, let's check that. Oh, that's true. Well, I wonder if it applies here, and I yep. wonder if it applies here. And, 
you know, and all of a sudden I've got a whole set of other understandings. Um, some of the things that are on my check sheet that you saw in the report are things that were came out of conversations at those conventions where someone just said, oh, don't you know about this? Yeah, then you, that'll fix that. And their method of doing it may be totally different. You know, their um, way of saying it may be totally different than I eventually said it, but now I had that little puzzle piece. No, oh, that's, that's a good point. I mean, so basically you're saying that the more you put in, the more you're going to get out of it at the end of the day. Right. The more right. people you, you know, speak to, the more you learn. I mean, look, yes, mate, exactly. we've got about seven minutes to go, and look, time is just flying. Is there any particular um, case or story that, that involved around the paranormal, because this is a paranormal show, being you step a naked zombie, um, that you would like to um, like to tell us about? I mean, that, that is something that was way off base, something that was really interesting to you that the listeners would find absolutely fascinating. Um, yeah, what came up as you said that is uh, a family that I worked with that had two toddlers who weren't speaking yet, mm -hmm. and they were both very, very psychic, and one of them was not sleeping because something was bothering her, something was in the room, and the parents knew something was going on, but, you know, didn't know what it was, and you know, through a whole series, it was actually a referral from a paranormal group. And the house itself was one of the most active sites I've ever seen. Um, and I worked on it several times before it seemed like it was more or less stable. And the kids were just such high vibration children and so psychic mm -hmm. that everything found them. Um, and one of these two twins just happened to be attracted to demons and they were trying to get her attention and she knew they were bad and she couldn't sleep. But um, I frequently do uh, kind of an evening salon thing in someone's living room where I talk about ghosts. And you get 20 or 25 people in someone's living room. We have a good time. And people, really? Well, that's after, incredible. Yeah. After I talk, I, I uh, encourage them to tell their stories. And then I try and give them a context and an understanding of what, the, what happened. Um, so we did this thing, and that meant that I got to go to the house. And I've never seen a house that had such bizarre energy things going on. There was a place in the living room which I knew was a vortex because I had cleared it, and it was still a cold spot. Um, evidently, the only way I was going to clear it was to be on site, which is pretty unusual. Mm -hmm. um, the stairs, people always tripped on the stairs and at the top of the stairs. And I went, started walking up the stairs, and I got vertigo. And I was like, what, what's going on here? So I shifted the way I was looking at things so that I could see the, the energy matrix of the building. And space-time was twisted and bent. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, is, is, this, you is, this, it, is this because of the, the vortex that was there? And this is what causes these problems? It had set, there were several vortexes. Okay. And I've been in lots of places with the vortexes. I've never seen this particular kind of distortion. Mm -hmm. And I was able to, once I could see it, I was able to do some work to minimize it. But the combination in that case of an extremely active site that was never going to be totally stable no matter what anyone did, um, and these kids who were just off the chart psychic, was going to make it very difficult for the family. Um, I heard from them, and the kids are doing much better. As they got older, it, it wasn't as big a problem. But um, there are some places in the world that have things going on that are truly strange, <laughs> um, even for people to do this work. And one of the things about this work is frequently, especially when I work, work with uh, my Australian friend, we occasionally work together yep. um, on things that we can't figure out any other way. And, you know, the conversation sounds like, you ever seen this before? No, you ever seen it before? <laughs> what do your guides say? What? <laughs> you know, there are some things going on as the earth is changing that have literally never been seen on this planet before. And folks like us wind up looking at it and going, okay, start giving us information about these because we're going to see them more and 
um, you know, we need to know how to handle this. So that there's a lot going on on the planet at the moment. Well, I, I must say, um, David, is look, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you tonight on, on, on Naked Zombie, and I'm sure the listeners have enjoyed it just as much as I have. Uh, mate, is there anything quickly? We've got about a minute to go. Is there anything you want to uh, mention, like uh, give a plug to anything or anything like that before we close up for tonight? Well, I'd love to hear from people. And on househealing.com, um, there's a contact form, but there's also an Ask David form. So if you've just got a question, um, you can go to the website and just send me a quick uh, email from the form and ask a question. And I'd love people to check out Empower Radio and the Farkas Files because we're having a good time with that. Well, actually, I, I pinched that title off for the intro for your show tonight, actually. So um, <laughs> it's on the website as well. Listen, David, um, I can't thank you enough, mate, for joining the show tonight and, and sharing your experience of that. And I'd love to get you back on again um, to talk pleasure. more at a Thanks later date. And um, I'd just like to say, listen, thank you to everybody who uh, tuned in tonight to uh, listen to this and also the podcast of Naked Zombie Paranormal Radio. And if you have anything you wish to bring forward or contact us, just go to the website, which is www.brad-scott.com. Go to the contact details address there and leave us a message or who you'd like us to speak to next. Have a good night, have a safe night, and we'll see you all very shortly.